you guys didn't even hear me because my mic wasn't on. How cool is that? So I messed up, but you didn't hear it. Ha ha, good for me. Anyways, welcome tonight to LBT Students Live. Uh, this is our fourth week being live, um, and uh, we have kind of created an uh, online environment um, that you can come to expect certain things. Well, tonight, you're going to get the unexpected. Um, actually, uh, I've, been, I've been spending some, you know, let's just be honest. During the quarantine, everybody has some extra time on their hands. Now, I don't have it near as much as you guys, but I still have some extra time. And with that extra time, um, you know, you, you spend it a lot of the times on social media. And so I've been, you know, perusing Facebook and Instagram and, you know, watching Netflix and all that stuff. And, you know, I've really come to the conclusion that I think the Lord might be calling me in a different direction. I really think that um, I might be being called to a different profession, uh, a different job, in other words, or a different career. And so the other day, I went to Oklahoma, and uh, I spent the day on my new job, and uh, I, I, this, you know, the first day was kind of rough. It was kind of crazy. Uh, but the second day got, they got pretty good. Uh, but I want to share with you guys in just a minute um, what, it, what I look like on my first day on the job. <laughs> that is me, day one, on the job at GW Zoo in Oklahoma, where I am. By the way, I'm originally from Oklahoma, in case y'all didn't know that. So that's right in my backyard. Uh, that was that's my new job, and uh, it's a ton of fun. I get to pet tigers. They call me uh, the Tiger King. Yes. Uh, fun fact: my middle name is actually Joe, and uh, so Joe Exotic is uh, my new profession. Yeah, how cool is that? All right, nobody in here is laughing, but I guarantee you, you guys are laughing on the other end. But it's kind of weird because nobody in here is laughing. All right, so. I hope you guys enjoy that. Hey, I spent like two minutes photoshopping that. It's not real. Okay, just so you know, I'm not going anywhere. All right, just some fun to have with you guys. But I thought I did a pretty good job photoshopping my face on the Joe Exotic. I think that looked pretty real. Uh, maybe we'll post that on social media later for you guys to share with your friends. Speaking of social media, hey, if you haven't taken the moment yet to share this, text someone and invite them to join us on YouTube. I want to encourage you, go ahead, do that, get somebody involved. This is a perfect opportunity for you to invite somebody to our youth group because it's all online. They, there's no inconvenience of having to go somewhere that you don't know where it is and be awkward with people you don't know. Um, this is all online, so I encourage you, invite somebody to join us on YouTube and uh, guarantee them that we're going to have some fun and we're going to learn some things about Jesus tonight. All right, so we're going to get started with our first game, our first game. And uh, what's this? This is a new game, and it's called First One. And right now, Rachel is on the other side of Lima, right, at my house, and she is uploading images to our Instagram story, all right? And with that, you're going to see instructions, and the instructions are for you to uh, take a selfie with whatever item is in the picture on our story and reply to that picture. And the first one to do that wins that round. And if you win the most rounds, we're going to be sending you a $15 Taco Bell gift card in the mail. And so that's how you play this game. All right, jump on Instagram, go to our page, check out our story, follow the instructions, be the first one to reply with a selfie of that particular item, and we'll see you guys in just a little bit.
You know, you would think as a tech and sound guy, I would remember to turn on my microphone. But you know, you get in the heat of the moment, and you just forget little simple things like that. So anyways, we're back, all right, and, <laughs> oh man, I'm cracking myself up. All right, we're back, and uh, the game is over. Hopefully you had the opportunity there to be the first one to respond to our stories with a picture of you and whatever item you picked. Um, I almost ran up here and, and grabbed some things and tried to, to win myself because I've been eating quite a bit of Taco Bell lately. Um, I just, you know, I enjoy Taco Bell, and it's just, it's good, it's easy, you know, it's fast. Go through the drive through pick up a burrito, eat it before you even get anywhere, wherever you're going. Anyways, so we'll be announcing the winners at the end of tonight, so make sure you stay tuned to find out who is the winner of the $15 Taco Bell gift card. Hey, we're going to get ready for our second game. And our second game, um, I asked you guys um, on Instagram a couple days ago to, to Google your name plus grammar, sh or not grammar, glamour shots, and uh, for you guys to share those pictures with us. And some of you did it, which is awesome, good job. Some of you did not do it, so I took the initiative and did it for you. Um, so we're going to play a little game, and how this is going to work is this is called Fam Glam. And how this is going to work is I'm going to show you a picture of an individual, a, a glamour shot. And you're going to try to guess who that glamour shot is, all right? And then if you get it right, Rachel is going to tally up who gets the most right. And then that person is going to get a $15 Taco Bell gift card mailed to their mailbox in the next couple of days. And so make sure you put in the comments, hey, don't put like a number, like you got to put someone's name, right? Okay, you got to say, hey so-and-so blank, right? That's who you think it is. And so we're going to get started. We're going to take our time going through this. Some of these are hilarious. Some of them are, you know, whatever. Um, they're all appropriate, all right? Just letting you know that. First one. All right, we got a guy who is not the Tiger King. He is the Snake King. And he has a snake and a pet of stash. And uh, I, what do they call that hairdo? I'm not, is it like the, the, the Patrick Swayze or something? I'm not really sure what that hairdo is called. Um, he's also wearing some bling. Um, but who do you think this is? Who do we think, okay, that this glamour shot would be of? All right? He's got some Patrick Swayze hair going on, a, a, a mustache. He's got holding a snake, the Snake Kings. Um, that's funny. That's from uh, the movie, was it Courageous, I think? Where, yeah, the guy's in the back of the cop car, and he's like, Snake Kings. <laughs> Anyways, all right, let's find out who it is. Jacob Kunkelman. Jacob Kunkelman is the Snake King, all right? Just so you know, everybody can start calling Jacob Snake King. He's, all right, let's see the next one. All right, we got some girl, okay? So we know it's a girl, all right? We know it's a girl. We have a mouse from a computer in this picture. I don't know what that means. We have some earrings. Um, she's got the, the crazy glamour hair, all right? Um, it's brown hair. It's not blonde. Um, but let's see. Who is this glamour shot of? Katrina Staley. Katrina Staley. These two individuals did not send me a glamour shot, but I had to get them. So next one. Okay, all right. We got a... Uh, <laughs> We got the Tiger King plus about 200 Twinkies. <laughs> and he's, his tiger, he, he has taken the weight from his tiger and put it into himself. And so the tiger got really small and is pure white. Um, but it, it's definitely the Tiger King with about 200 Twinkies. And he's wearing some, some old school glasses. Fun fact, my dad had glasses like that um, when I was born. Um, all right. Uh, fun, oh, hey, check this out. There's a red A on the picture. What does that mean? Let's find out. Aaron Ray. Aaron Ray. This is Aaron's glamour shot. He's right now standing behind the table, laughing, going like this, being weird. All right, cool. Aaron, you're known as Fat Tiger King, all right? All right, we're going to go to the next one. Cracking myself up again, man. All right, here we go. We got a girl. Okay, so we know it's not a boy. It's a girl. Um, 
She's got some, some flowing brown hair. Um, she's got some, some, some big circular earrings on. Uh, she's got, she's, fun fact, she actually killed Dino and made a jacket out of Dino from the Flintstones. That's what it looks like to me. Um, and uh, so, who, so who do we think this is? Who do we think this is? All right. All right, here we go. Are you ready? Set. Show us. Tanner Zweebel. Tanner Zweebel. Tanner Zweebel. All right, Tanner. Well, I hope you enjoyed your glamour shot. Next one. Okay. Uh, this lady is older. Okay. She's older. We know it's a girl, obviously. Uh, she's wearing a white glove. We can't see if she has another white glove. Maybe she's trying not to get coronavirus. Um, she has some big earrings, some big hair. Her hair is red. Um, this dress, I don't know what this is called, but it, uh, it looks goofy. Um, yeah, definitely goofy. Um, she has green eyes, it looks like, I think. Those look like green eyes. Um, all right, let's find out who this one is. Ooh, Rachel Green. Rachel Green, this is your glamour shot. Wife, uh, you look a lot better than this. I'm just going to let everybody know you look a lot better than this. But it's funny that she has green eyes and your last name's green. Oh, yeah, that's because that's my last name. All right, next one. Okay, uh, we got a guy, so we know it's a guy, all right? Uh, he looks like he's wearing, wearing a class ring uh, on his middle finger, not on his ring finger, on his middle finger. That means it's probably uh, too big for his ring finger. It looks like he's wearing some type of uh, hippie bracelet. Um, he's got this, this awesome white turtleneck on and a blue sweater. Uh, but check out that hair. I think this is a younger version of the Tiger King, right? A younger version of the Tiger King before he dyed his hair. You know, maybe this was like his high school picture. Yeah. Got some bangs, got the, the, the business in the front, party in the back. Yeah. All right, let's find out who this is. Michael Green, the original Tiger King. Yeah. All right, here we go. Next one. Okay. Speaking of Tiger King, um, this looks like a bobcat of some type. I don't know, or a lynx or something. Um, this guy, okay, we know it's a guy, it's not a girl. Got a mustache. You know, got the, 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 the business in the front, part in the back still going on. But this guy's ripped, man. He's like, he's like, he must be a ladies' man of some type. Um, he also has muscles. Um, yeah, I, I would not want to arm wrestle this guy. He's also wearing a watch, which means he's high class. He's intelligent, and he likes to know what time it is. Um, and then he's got this cat with him. Uh... I don't know what that means. Maybe his name is Lynx. I don't know. All right, let's find out who this is. Caleb Preston. Caleb Preston. That's your future, all right? About 20 years from now, that's you working out, looking good with the mustache, long hair, and a unibrow. No, I think that's just a shadow. All right, next one. Okay, we have a girl. She has red lipstick. She has a necklace. Um, there's some kind of white thing in her hair right here. I don't know what it is. It's probably just a glare of some type. Um, she's holding her hand over her heart, which means she, she loves people, or she is saying the Pledge of Allegiance to a flag somewhere as she's staring at it. But who do we think this is? Whose glamour shot is this? Ready? Show us. Whoa, where'd it go? Kaylee Gibson. Kaylee Gibson. All right, cool. Kaylee, that's your future. All right, next one. Okay, we have, uh, it's, it's interesting that someone would send me this because it has glamour shots across the front of it, okay? It's also probably the same age as most of you. Um, got an interesting farmer shirt thing going on. Kind of like me, you know, got that, that redneck vibe going on. Got, got some long hair. Got it curled. She just got a fresh curl. Uh, this looks like a school picture. 
So I'm assuming this person is in school, that which marks out any leaders. Um, so it must be a student. Um, yeah. So try to guess who this is. Ready? Set? Caitlin Staley. Caitlin Staley. If you got that one right, um, props to you because I never would have guessed that one. Next one. Okay, we got a, a T-Swift lookalike um, in a yellow and white tube, probably straw of some kind. I don't know what's going on here. Some kind of bedazzled, what do they call that? Um, sequence? Sequence shirt? Um, laughing? Uh, looks like holding something. Definitely not a guy. It's definitely a girl. Uh, I don't, this looks like a question mark of some type. I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know what J14 means. Maybe Junior 14 or maybe John 14. I don't know. Who knows? I don't know. Who knows? All right, let's find out who it is. Cameron Staley. Cameron Staley. Next one. <laughs> this is the Tiger King uh, brother from another mother. With his, uh, looks like rif uh, 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 a rifle of some type. We got a helicopter going up here. Uh, we've got the sun setting. We, he's got a boy. Um, these look like the, the necklaces that you get when you're in Hawaii with, like, the, the round nuts. Or uh, they might just be Buckeyes. I don't know. Maybe it's a Buckeye necklace. Uh, there's definitely a tattoo on the belly. Um, not sure what it is. I see, like, half of a face of mask or some kind. Uh, he is married. Fun fact. We do see a ring there. Um, but uh, I'm not sure. All right. So try to guess who it is and show us in five, four, three, two, one. Tyler Thompson. Tyler Thompson. Anyone get that one right? Kennedy Connor got it right. Good job, Kennedy. All right, next one. We've got, oh, this girl looks like she's from the Golden Girls, only minus 25 years, um, with the, the poofy red hair and the classy look of the, the black glove over um, some kind of leopard print top. Um, she's also got leopard print. She's surrounded by leopard print. This one must be the leopard queen of some type. Uh, big, big orange uh, earrings, blue eyes. Um, this looks nothing like anybody in our group, so I'm not sure who it is. Um, so we're going to find out in five, four, Ilana Zutch, Ilana, did anyone get that one right? I would not have guessed Ilana. All right, next one. Okay, we've got, uh, who's that guy in that show? <laughs> who's that guy in that show? Um, what, man, he also, he also plays the guy in Jurassic Park. Uh, huh? Newman? Yes, that guy, Newman from Seinfeld. This looks like his sister. <laughs> I'm assuming that is, is Newman from Seinfeld's sister, uh, also known as the guy that, that gets spit in the face by the little, the little birdie-looking dinosaur in Jurassic Park. <laughs> Purple background, all right, uh, earring, gold, wearing a lot of gold, so she's probably classy, all right. All right, let's find out who it is. Mariah Zutch. Hey, look, she even got her name put on the picture. She's cool like that. Mariah Zutch. I, anyone guess that? I would not have guessed that. All right. Uh, I, is there one more? Is that it? One more. All right, here we go. This guy. Okay, we got Bob Ross's uh, blonde cousin, all right, with uh, a blonde afro, got some chest hair going on, uh, a black cat. A black cat, got a watch, striped shirt. Um, so we know it's a guy, all right? Uh, we can't see his wedding finger, so we don't know if he's married. Um, but that fro, man, that's, that's a good-looking blonde fro. Uh, fun fact, the guy who this actually is, we're not going to show you yet, used to have a similar hairdo, but it was brown. 
Yeah. Used to have a very similar hairdo, but it was brown. And uh, so try to guess who this is. I'll give you a hint. It is a leader. It's not a student. And we're going to find out right now. Gary Plesher. Who got that one right? Because he's bald as a baby's butt now. So I definitely would not have guessed that. Uh, but Gary Plesher, that is Gary Plesher's glamour shot. That's actually, fun fact, that's actually his high school picture um, that he uh, snuck a cat into into school so that he could um, get some, some ladies to check him out. Yeah, so. Huh? Ethan Wright, you guessed it. Good job, man. All right, that it completes our game of fam glam. All right, fam glam. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. A lot of fun. It's always fun to, to get on Google and, and search for names and glamour shots, and you never know what you're going to come across. Um, but, yeah, it was fun. All right. Um, so now we're going to, uh, usually this is where we play a funny video or we do some kind of skit or something like that. Um, but tonight we're actually ending our series uh, of being stressed out. And so I want to do something a little bit different. And uh, I actually wanted to um, uh, get a little bit more serious tonight. And so here in, in just a couple seconds, um, Aaron Blevins is going to come up and he's going to lead worship for us. And I know that it can be awkward trying to worship through a screen, uh, but I encourage you guys, take this opportunity, sing along. Man, if you need to go into a different room or go outside with your device um, so you can really prepare your heart for worship and for the message, I encourage you to do that. Also, um, while we are doing worship and right before, starting now, um, I really encourage you guys, comment in the video um, some prayer requests. And... Uh, I just want to know how you guys are doing. How can we be praying for you, uh, be praying for you guys individually? You know, we're praying for you guys as a group, but I would love to know specifically how we can be praying for you. So share some prayer requests with us in the comments. And then after worship, uh, I'm going to get up here and I'm going to pray about those requests. And, uh, and then we'll get into the lesson. And so that's the plan. So go ahead, uh, get ready to worship. Aaron's going to come up here. He's going to get ready. I'm going to get my iPad on connected to the soundboard so that I can uh, turn stuff on. Um, but I encourage you, take this opportunity to worship. Man, leave us a prayer request and how we can pray for you specifically uh, as we continue to go through this quarantine and deal with the coronavirus stuff. And maybe it's just not even connected to that. Maybe you're just got something in your life personally that you're struggling with that you could use some prayer for. I encourage you. Drop a prayer request in the comments. We'll be praying for those here in just a little bit. Uh, but right now, we're going to go into worship with Aaron. And uh, everybody, virtually, give Aaron a hand. Come to the well that never runs dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. Come, all you sinners, come find his mercy. Come to the table, he will satisfy. Taste of his goodness, find what you're looking for. For God so loved the world that he gave us, his one and only Son to save. Whoever believes in him will live forever. Bring all your failures, bring your addictions, come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting there.
is waiting God so loved the world I count on one thing the same God that never fails will not fail me now you won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. Working all things out. Oh, yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Oh, yes, I will. count one thing the same God who never fails will not fail me now you won't fail me now in the waiting the same God who's never late is working all things out working all things out oh yes I will lift you high in the Yes, I will bless your name. Oh, yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy in all my days. Yes, I will for all my days. Oh, yes, I will. I choose to pray. Nothing can stand against, and I choose to praise, to glorify, to glorify the name of all names. That nothing can stand against, and I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. That nothing can stand against. Who oh, yes I will. Lift you high in the lowest valley, yes, I will bless your name, oh, yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy in all my days, oh, yes, I will for all my days, oh, yes, I Oh, yes, I 
that's your guys' heart cry, that no matter what's going on in your life, no matter the things that you're dealing with or struggling with, that you're going to praise him no matter what. Let's continue in our worship tonight. stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never 
never stop working. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are, and that is who you are, oh, that is who you are, that is who you are, that is who you are, that is who you He never fails me all my days I've been held in your hand from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head oh I will sing of the goodness of God cause all my life you have been faithful and all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able oh, I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice You have led me through the fire In darkest night you are close like no other i've known you as a father i've known you as a friend and i have lived in the goodness of god so my life you have been faithful and all my life you have been so so Every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Because your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now, I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Cause your goodness is running after, it's running after to me cause all my life you have been faithful and all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able oh, I will sing of the goodness of God all my life you have been faithful all my life you have been so so good with every breath that i am able oh, i will sing of the goodness of god i will sing of the goodness of God. 
How many of you guys can say that? All my life, you have been faithful. Remember that. All of our life, God has been faithful and he has been good. And so during this time of craziness in the world, man, remember that God is good. Man, we've talked about it week after week for the last few weeks, um, just about how good our God is and how we can trust him and how we can just live for him. And um, I'm going to take this opportunity um, just to spend some time in prayer. And uh, I hope you guys will join me where you're at, just praying with me. Um, the, the, the specific prayer request that we got was from uh, Austin. And Austin wants us to pray um, for his friend Seth, um, who their family is a high risk for coronavirus. And uh, Seth is going to be going to the Army soon. So those two things, kind of a double, a double prayer request. And so be praying for that. Um, also be praying um, just for Allen County and Ohio and the country. You know, we're, we're going up as far as coronavirus um, counts, and uh, we haven't peaked yet. And so I want to encourage you, man, just be praying. Hey, be praying also for Erica's uh, brother, Michael, uh, who's still on a ventilator, and uh, there's no updates with him currently, uh, but you guys can follow along with Erica on Facebook. And uh, there's a lot of things to be praying about uh, in these days. And so let's pray uh, for just a moment. Join me wherever you're at. And uh, pray with me. Heavenly Father, um, Lord, we come before you and we know that you are faithful. We know that you are good. And God, I ask that you would remind each and every one of us um, watching this video and even people outside of this video, God, that you would continue to, to use um, the church online to remind people of your faithfulness and of your goodness. And God, I pray specifically for Seth. And his family, God, I pray that you would put a hedge of protection around them, Lord. God, that they would be w wise with what they do, but God, also that you would give divine protection to their family. Um, God, that they would not come down with this coronavirus. God, I pray, ask that you would be with Seth as he's getting ready to go into the army. God, I pray that you would protect him. God, um, even through the, the, the getting their experience, the boot camp experience, God, even just being in the army. And I thank you for his willingness to serve our country. Um, God, and I pray that you can use him in a mighty way with wherever you send him, God. Lord, I pray for Michael, Erica's brother. Lord, I ask that you would, um, God, be working in him right now, Lord. God, that you would bring healing to him. God, that he would come out on the other side of this um, stronger physically. And God, that he would be there um, to be a light in his family and to, to encourage those that are watching this situation. God, I pray that you can use his life as a testimony of your goodness and of your faithfulness. And God, as we continue um, to just look forward at what's coming uh, in the future, God, with this coronavirus and staying in quarantine and all the different things that are going on, Lord, suicide hotlines are going up. And we just know that this world is in a panic and they're fearful. And God, I pray that you um, would use your church and that you would use individuals through online, through telephone communication, through whatever means possible, God, that we would be light in a dark place right now. And that we would remind people that, God, you are faithful and you are good. And that we would never forget that. Lord, I pray these things in your name, Father. Amen. Amen. All right, hey, uh, thanks, Aaron, for joining us and leading us in worship tonight. Um, hopefully you guys uh, were able to enjoy that. And uh, I wanted to change it up, you know. I wanted to, to do something a little bit different um, and so I hope you enjoy that. And uh, thank Aaron. If you see Aaron or you want to send him a Facebook message or something, just thank him for that. Uh, but if you have uh, your notes, your journal, your Bible, whatever you like to, to use during lesson time, I encourage you to get that out. Hey, we're, gonna, we're starting uh, week four of our series on stressed out. Um, that's been a series that we've been doing for the last four weeks. This series literally started um, when all this coronavirus stuff started. And so, you know, we started this series online, and we're finishing it online. Um, so it's been over a month since you guys were actually able to be here in this building, uh, being able to see some of you guys. You know, we've done some cool things last month, uh, but we miss you guys, and we, want, we can't wait to be able to get back together uh, with you physically in person. Uh, but like I said, tonight is the last week of this series, and we're going to continue to be talking about stress and fear and specifically tonight, we're going to be talking about combating stress and 
uh, when you combat stress, what's your, you have two ways that you can react to stress, and that's either with confidence or with fear. And we're going we're gonna to talk about responding with confidence tonight. Um, fun story, story time with Pastor Michael. Um, I, when I was younger, I was probably in junior high-ish, and uh, I was in Boy Scouts. And uh, it was my, I was only in Boy Scouts for like one year. Um, I was able to uh, get into a, I don't even remember what they called it back then, uh, a troop maybe. I don't know. I don't remember. Uh, but I was in Boy Scouts, and we always went to this place called Lake Uchi. Yeah, if you don't know how to spell it, it's E-U-C-H-A. It's some kind of Oklahoma Native American name. I don't know. Uh, but we'd go to Lake Uchi. And, uh, you know, this is, we, I, Lake Uchi was like 30 minutes from my house. And so we knew, I, I, we went there all the time. And there was, this, um, there was this cave that I had known about previously uh, with my family going there. And I wanted to show that to my Boy Scout groups because I, bec- group, because I wanted to be cool, right? I wanted to be like, you know, I'm, I'm cool. I know where this stuff is. I, I've been around here. I know, you know, I know this area. And I wanted to take him to show them the, these caves. And so we took our group. Uh, there was actually one girl in this group. She was actually uh, the troop leader's daughter. Um, and so that was her way in. Was she was, and she was probably more boy than most of us. Um, but she, she just loved it. And uh, we were all going to this, this cave, and it was getting dark, and we had our flashlights and headlights on, and, and we're going there. And um, I, I show them where this cave is and yada, yada, yada. And I remember this girl being a little bit older than me, um, probably three or four years older than me. Um, and uh, we went there, went to the cave, went in the cave, check it out, yada, yada, yada. On the way back from the cave, um, this girl and another older guy um, started to tell us stories about Lake Uchi. Um, you know, those kind of scary stories that you get told um, when you're a junior high boy on a Boy Scout trip. Yeah. And uh, they were talking about panthers, talking how there was panthers in these woods, and it's dark, and, you know, I'm walking, and, and they just take off running um, the group does, and I'm just kind of, I'm the, I'm the scaredy cat that's sitting back, and just, I just froze, and, and I heard, I heard like screaming, and I didn't know if it was like an actual panther screaming, or somebody trying to sound like a panther, um, but it was terrifying, and I froze in that moment, and didn't do anything, I didn't respond in any way, right, because of fear, I just froze in the moment, and I didn't know what to do, and I want to, you know, talk a little bit, you know, have you ever been like that? Have you ever been so stressed or, or freaked out that you just froze with fear? You know, maybe an example that you guys can relate with is, let's say it's the first day of school, and your teacher brings you all into the class, and she tells you, or he, whatever, um, they tell you that uh, there's this big assignment that's due at the end of the year. Uh, and that assignment is worth about half of your grade at the end of the year. So you come in, you hear that, and you're like, okay, you know, it's August, and uh, I have till May to get this project done, whether it's an essay or, or a hands-on project, whatever it is. And so you're, you, you know, you're like, okay, so you kind of push it to the back of your mind for the first semester, and you're like, you know, I'll do it when I get to it. And, and then you start thinking about it a couple of times, uh, during the second semester, um, but you have more important things to do like sports or other assignments that are due immediately, and you continue to push that assignment back, and you're like, as long as I finish by the end of the school year, I'm good. Um, and we all know what ends up happening, right? At the end of the school year, we know what ends up happening. Suddenly, it's the night before the last day of school, and you haven't even started on that project, and, you know, if you've ever been in this position, then you know the kind of frozen fear that I was talking about earlier in my story. Talk, that that, that you, sh- you know you should spend every second of the next 12 hours to finish that project on time. But it's so overwhelming, and it's so stressful, and you're so afraid that you won't finish it, that you just sit there in fear. And you can't even bring yourself to start it. I remember there was a time in my life 
when I was, it was an essay, and it was like a, a, a five-page essay. I know that doesn't sound like a whole lot, but in, you know, in my school, in, in, in early high school, to me, that was a lot. Five pages is a lot of writing, you know, and we wrote by hand. We, we wrote cursive by hand. We didn't type them out. It kind of makes me feel old, but, um, you know, I remember a time like that, and I, and I did the exact same thing. I put off that assignment all year long, and then the last week of school, I'm like, hey, I need to do this. And I couldn't, I, w- I was so stressed out about the assignment and getting a good grade on it that I didn't even actually get started on it till like the day of. And I, you just get in that mindset and you have a mind blank and you just can't think, you know, what you're supposed to be writing about or, or how, to pro- how to even start on the project. You know, and so, you know, that's, that's a frozen fear kind of stress that we talk about. And it's a pretty good reason to be, a, to be stressed, um, but it, it also is a good reason to have your priorities in the right order like we talked about last week. Um, but think about it. How often does that same type of fear happen in your life over stressful things? How often do stressful things cause you to freeze in the moment and not know how to respond or not know how to react out of, because you've frozen out of fear? You know, you're, maybe there's other areas in your life where you do this. Maybe thinking about what people think of you. Um, and so you let fear of their opinion control the way you dress or the way you act. Maybe you're stressed about having friends and if people will like you or not. And so you, you, you let fear keep you from being yourself. You know, that I see students do that all the time. That They're, they're so uh, ingrained and, and stressed about what other people think about them, that they're not willing to be themselves and act how they usually act. There are too many times in our lives where we, re, where we react to stress with fear. And I want you to, I want to ask you a question. Have you read anything in the Bible lately? If you have, has anything that you've read pointed to letting fear control you? The answer to that is no, of course not, right? The Bible is full of reasons to not be afraid. When there is stress in your life, you can react one of two ways. Either you can react with fear or you can react with confidence. When stress enters into your life, there's only two ways to act. You can either react with fear or you can react with confidence. In Romans chapter 8, verse 31 Paul tells the church in Rome, what then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? And I want you to to seriously get how amazing this is. God is for us. And since he's for us, who can be against us? With God on our side, what do we really have to be afraid of? And the answer is nothing, because nothing is bigger than our God. Nothing is more powerful than our God, and nothing, there's nothing that God cannot handle. Think of the things in your life that make you feel stressed. Is any one of those things bigger than God? Is there anything at all that you're stressed about yet you think God cannot handle? And the answer is no. And so why be afraid? If there's anything at all that should make you feel confident, it's knowing that God is on your side. No matter what this world throws at us, no matter how stressful or how nerve-wracking it may be, you can look straight in the face with confidence that God is on our side. Matthew chapter 6, Jesus tells us in verses 26 and 27, Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet our heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? And so not only can you have the confidence of knowing that God is on your side and God is for you, you can also be confident that God is going to take care of you. Imagine this. Imagine if whenever anything stressful happened, you stopped and you thought, I'm not going to be afraid and worry about this because I know that God thinks I'm valuable and he's going to take care of me. How can you imagine or can you imagine how different life would be if we thought that? 
If we knew that, that if, we, if we really understood that, that, that passage of Scripture and said, I am valuable, God is going to take care of me. Here's the thing. That's true. God thinks we are valuable. And he's going to take care of us. And so the only difference is whether or not you choose to act like that when things are stressful. This verse also tells us that worrying isn't going to change anything. It cannot add so much as a single hour to your life. And so whether you want to waste time being afraid or worrying or believing that God thinks you are valuable and he will care for you. And so not only can we believe that, that God is for us and have confidence in that, we can also know that, God, that we have confidence in the fact that God finds us valuable and he's going to take care of us. In John chapter, or 1 John chapter 4, 18, it says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment, and the one who fears is not made perfect in love. And I want to illustrate this verse for you guys, what it really means um, that perfect love drives out fear. And I want you to imagine this container is you, okay? This container represents you. It represents your, your, your mind, your body, your heart, everything that is you, this container represents. And then these ping pong balls represent the things that cause you stress in your life, whether that's quarantine or having to do schoolwork online or what your friends might think of you if you act a certain way, or what you want it to wear for Easter Sunday, even though you're not coming to the physical church location. These ping pong balls represent all the things in your life that stress you out, that cause you worry, that cause you anxiety. And they just come at us, and we allow them to set in our hearts and in our mind. We allow these things to take up space in our life. We allow these things to, to cause us to react in fear instead of in confidence to what God is trying to do in our life. But then you have Jesus, the living water, perfect love. And this verse tells us there is no fear in love. But perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. And the one who fears is not made perfect in love. There is no fear in love. Perfect love drives out fear. And so when we spend time in the word and when we spend time in prayer and when we focus on our relationship with Jesus Christ as a first priority instead of a last priority or a last resort, and we allow him to invest into our life, what begins to happen is perfect love drives out fear. And it begins to take space in our life. And all the stresses That are in our life, when we allow Jesus to fill us up, all those stresses go away. Perfect love drives out, drowns out fear. It drowns out stress. It drowns out anxieties. All the things that represent those things in our life, perfect love drives that out. That's why it's so important to spend time in the Word and to spend time in prayer and to focus on our relationship with Jesus Christ. Because at the end of the day, we have the perfect love of God. No matter the stress that's going to be in our lives, that perfect love is still there no matter what. And if you're living in fear due to stress or any other reason, then you're not taking advantage of that perfect love. For some reason, it's so easy for us to take for granted that perfect love. For example, how many of you would say that you believe that Jesus died for you 
so that your sins could be forgiven and you could experience the perfect love of God. How many of you guys would say that? Okay, now how many of you guys, um, how many of you remember that on a daily basis? How many of you actually think about the fact that Jesus died for you every single day? It's a big deal. I mean, come on, we're talking about Jesus, right? We're going into Easter weekend. Tomorrow's Monday, Thursday, Friday's a good Friday, Easter Sunday's coming. How many of us guys, you know, this is, to so many of us, we spend this week thinking about the, the death and resurrection, but we don't remember it on a daily basis because we take it for granted. Because in our life, so many times we've grown used to hearing the, the words of, of forgiveness or perfect love or, or grace or mercy, and we don't stop to think about what they truly mean because we have taken things like that for granted. And so I want, to re- I want you to challenge yourself to remember the cross. Remember what Jesus has done for us. Not just this week leading into Easter, especially this week leading into Easter, but not just this week. Remind yourself on a daily basis of what Jesus has done in your life. And the perfect love of God The perfect love of Jesus drives out fear. It drives out stress. It drives out anxiety. And so remember him. There's a purpose for it. There's a purpose why God gave us the Bible, so that we could spend time with him. And I want to encourage you, man, remember that we can be confident that God is for us. That we can be confident that God values us. He showed it on the cross. And that we can be confident that God is going to take care of us. And lastly, that we can be confident when we spend time with God and we invest in that relationship, his perfect love is going to drive out the stress, anxiety, and fears in our lives. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, um, Lord, we just come before you tonight. God, again, giving you the glory, thanking you for your faithfulness and for your goodness. God, thank you for your love. Thank you for what this week really means to us as believers. God, I pray that that we would reflect on what this week means to us. But God, we would continue to to remember what you did on the cross over 2,000 years ago every day of our life. And that we would allow your perfect love to drive out the things of our life that are causing us stress, anxiety, worriness, and fear. God, that we wouldn't allow those things to continue to sit in our hearts and in our minds. But, God, we would, we would take in you and that your perfect love would drive that out. God, I ask that you would be with um, all the people watching this video, God. Lord, keep them encouraged. Keep them uplifted. God, I pray that you would, um, God, just speak to them um, specifically, especially this weekend, God, what you might have for them in their life and in their adventure with you, God. Lord, I pray these things in your name, Father. Amen. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed tonight. Um, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the lesson. Um, Our winners for the games earlier, um, the winner for the the winner for the first game, first one, is Ilana Zutch. Ilana, good job. Everybody give Ilana a virtual hand. She was the first one to win that game. I got something in my eye. And then Fam Glam, or Fam Glam uh, winner is Kaylee Gibson. Congratulations, Kaylee Gibson. Both of you guys will be receiving a $15 Taco Bell gift card to your mailbox in the next couple days. Hey, fun fact, Taco Bell is still open during quarantine. Um, maybe you can get your parents to take you out of the house for a few minutes um, to go get some Taco Bell. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, don't forget, Sunday nights, 830 is our all Zoom, gro- gro- all Zoom group hangout. Sunday nights at 830. Also, be, make sure you're engaging in our social media on a daily basis so that you know what's happening in the student ministry and so that we can connect with you guys virtually. Um, Also, don't forget that our devotions uh, slow down. This is the last week, um, so we have one more week of those, and then we'll be done. And so make sure you tune in for those on Thursdays. 
Tuesdays and Sundays. And uh, yeah, I think that's all the announcements I have for you guys. And so we're going to jump off of here and we're going to get onto our Zoom groups. And uh, guys, your meeting ID is right here. You can jump on. to be able to participate in some of this group discussion. We'll see you guys in just a little bit. Enjoy your night. Have fun in your groups. And uh, we'll see you all Sunday night, 830, uh, all group Zoom hangout. Love you guys. See you later. Free to go.